Everything I know about pain, I learned by accident, literally. In 2005, 14 miles from Wisdom, Montana, I fell asleep at the wheel, overcorrected, and rolled violently down the borrow pit. Sitting in the wreckage of my car, partially paralyzed from the neck down and gradually suffocating from two punctured lungs might seem like an unlikely way to get an education, but that's how it was for me. My accident landed me in the ICU in Butte with a broken neck, fighting for my life. After I'd been taken off the ventilator, I was finally able to ask one of my neurosurgeons a question that had been weighing on my heart. What's my prognosis, doctor? Looking over his chart, he said, well, you'll never be normal. That answer, while supremely accurate, was devastating. The next day, his partner, the neurosurgeon who actually did my surgery, came in, and I was able to ask him the same question. His answer was different. With bold confidence, he smiled and looked at me in the eye and said, you're going to walk again. At that moment, I had a choice. I could be psychologically paralyzed by the discouraging voice, you'll never be normal, or I could embrace the courage and hope of the second voice. Both statements were true. The decision was mine. Refusing to believe the discouraging voice, I tackled the next two years of rehab and recovery with a vengeance. I relearned to sit up in a chair, to stand, to walk, to regain movement, to write my name. But even as I discovered my physical, as I recovered my physical function, burning nerve pain from my neck down gradually took over my life. Refusing to believe the discouraging voice, I tackled the next um, two years and refusing to believe that I would never be normal. Pain has a way of getting our attention, and it got mine fully. I fought for a solution, an answer, a cure, but the more I focused on pain, the worse it got. Pain expert Dr. Michael Moskowitz, in his book, Neuroplasticity, Changing the Brain in Pain, uses this graphic illustration to show the regions of the brain that experience pain. When a person experiences acute pain, these key regions of the brain are activated. But as acute pain is experienced and focused on, it becomes memorized. More brain cells are recruited to the experience, and pain amplifies and takes on a life of its own. Pain is loud, and chronic pain is hard to ignore. An old neurological adage says, what fires together, wires together. What we focus on, we empower and enlarge. Bit by bit, day by day, the brain builds connections that define what we know, how we feel. In my experience, the brain defined pain, and it was excruciating. I'm not saying it's all in my head. My pain is real. It has a real cause. A fluid-filled cyst called the syrinx at the level of my injury. But the fact is that pain is an experience of the brain. I discovered this by learning about phantom limb pain. How do you explain pain that is experienced in a limb that's not even there? Many answers have been offered, but today's best science has found that while the limb may be missing, the portion of the brain dedicated to that limb still exists. And if the brain says that the limb hurts, then it hurts. Dr. Ramachandran developed a mirror box that would trick the brain into thinking that the missing limb is actually there, complete, healthy, whole. This is me using the mirror box, and when I see my paralyzed hand as if it's working, my pain goes away. My accidental discovery of this fact led me to a powerful realization. How I see myself could completely transform my experience of pain. Seeing myself as healthy and whole and complete, I could unlearn pain by focusing on not what is wrong, but on what is right. This was my first step in taking courage by the hand and walking into a whole new life. But what can you focus on when you have burning nerve pain from the neck down? You focus on the neck up. <laughs> you focus on what feels good, what works, what's going right. So that's what I did. Every time the pain started to scream, I deliberately turned my focus toward healthy tissue, healthy thoughts, the positive, not the negative. And it worked. My overall experience of pain decreased. I felt like I was getting my life back. I started doing those things that my doctor told me would help my experience of pain. Exercise. 
relaxation, sleep. I began cutting my pain medications. I was beginning to find my new normal. But a woman I had met at a pain clinic wasn't doing as well. She couldn't see past the pain. She needed someone to walk beside her to do for her what Dr. Serini had done for me, to say to her, you'll walk again. So I became her coach, and she got her life back too. I call this contagious courage, the ability to pass my victory over pain to someone else, to walk alongside and let them borrow my courage until they have some of their own. I become their mirror box to give them hope, sharing the words they need to hear to see themselves whole and complete. My favorite coaching question is, what went well this week? At first, this really throws people off. They expect the opposite question, so what's wrong, or how's your pain? Most of them stammer as they try to turn their brain around and process the question. It's as if I'm asking them to make a giant U-turn, and I am. There are approximately 116 million people in the United States with chronic pain, and everyone needs the courage it takes to see themselves whole and to live again. And every day I try to reach them, but the truth is everyone hurts and we all face pain in one way or another. As we face the challenges of life, we all hear two voices. One screams, you'll never be normal. The other gives us hope and contagious courage. It stands up boldly and declares, you'll walk again. <laughs>